Hey guys, I'm here with another basketball video. This is a video about the recent rankings that ESPN came out with. So ESPN recently made a top 100 NBA players of all time ranking and um, I think they ranked it based on some advanced metrics, some in, like NBA win shares and stuff like that. And I'm going to go, go through this list one by one and uh, tell you guys what I think about it, if I disagree or agree with the ranking. And if I agree, I would usually you know, not say much about it. If I disagree, then I always say whether the player is overrated or underrated, according to my opinion. So uh, let's, let's begin. Alright, so we have the all-time NBA rank 91 to 100 to begin with. And uh, let's see, number 91, this is going, I guess, backwards. 91, Maurice Cheeks. Uh, Maurice Cheeks, you know, actually I think he's pretty underrated, so I'm a little bit surprised to see him at 90, number 91, but there he is, and I don't really have a problem with that, I think it, it's fine. Uh, great defensive player, you know, part of that 83 uh, championship team of the 76ers. And then number 92, Nate Thurmond. Now this one I kind of have a problem with because I think, in general, ESPN kind of ranks lower players. Uh, they're underrating lower players and overrating modern players because they they have this generation or era bias that a lot of fans do. A lot of fans give older players a lot of disrespect because they played in an older era with so-called less competition, so they disregard a lot of the accomplishments that older players did, and Nate Thurman is one of them. I mean, Nate Thurman is one of the best defensive uh, centers of all time, you know, and one of the best rebounders of all time too, like 15 rebounds per game right and the two blocks per game which is only tracked for the last few years of his career so I think Nate Thurman is not the 92nd player of all time he definitely deserves to be higher ranked than that so he's very underrated here so I disagree with this ranking I mean if you look back the NBA had a top greatest 50 greatest player celebration back in 97 and uh, Nate Thurman was on that so how can a top 50 greatest player in that celebration fall all the way down to 92 it doesn't make any sense so yeah, no idea why he's uh, that low. Lenny Wilkins, again, here's another player um, who was part of the 50 Greatest Players celebration, although I think Nate Thurman is better than Lenny Wilkins, but still, I mean, all the way down to 93, right? Uh, that's crazy. Like, Net Lenny Wilkins at least deserves to be a little bit higher than that. 16.5, 4.7, 6.7 assists. Uh, yeah, pretty underrated here. Mike Price, the number 94. Don't really have an opinion on this. I do think he's one of the better Cleveland Cavaliers apparently better than Brad Doherty because he's not on here so um, I guess it's fine Mark Price and then Marcus Soule this is where they have a lot of modern players on here um, I'm not sure Marcus Soule uh, I mean he's a good defensive player he's a good center and uh, slightly better than Paul Gasol at this point so I'm not gonna disagree too much with this one um, Bobby Jones number 96 um, again great defensive player and uh, yeah, 11 time all defensive selection. The problem is that they don't have Michael Cooper on this list, even though Michael Cooper actually won Defensive Player of the Year uh, playing the same spot that Bobby Jones did, which is the forward position. So it's a little bit weird why they don't have Michael Cooper, but they have Bobby Jones. And they have James Harden, 97. I'm, I'm fine with that too. I think James Harden is a pretty good baller. And um, yeah, in today's NBA, you know, he's one of the top players of all time. Having him 90, 97th all time, I think is fine. So, not too much about that. Gail Goodrick, 98. Um, yeah, I think James Harden is better than Gail Goodrick, so I have no problems with that either. I mean, Gail Goodrick was a good good player, um, but yeah, James Harden is a little bit better, so 98 is fine. Uh, 99, Kevin Love. So, this is where people had like a little bit of a problem. Kevin Love really only had one good season, right? Which is 2011 when he got like 15 rebounds a game and uh, even though he's a really good rebounder I'm not sure if he's a top 100 player yet I think it's a little bit early to put him in the top 100 player especially when he didn't do that well in the Cleveland Cavs yet he was playing really good for the Timberwolves but for the Cleveland Cavs yeah not really that much so I think he's a bit overrated here he does, he's not top 100 yet in my opinion and uh, Sean Kemp which is number 100 and yeah I, I, along with a lot of people I, I agree that Sean Kemp is better than uh, Kevin Love at this moment um, I think I think Sean Kemp deserves to be ranked higher than Love so um, yeah I have no idea why they rank Love higher so that is number 91 to 100 now let's move on to 81 to 90 okay let's go uh, Cindy Moncrief at number 81 um, really underrated player actually not even the Hall of Fame and one of the greatest defensive uh, guards ever 
Um, and I think I'm glad that he got the recognition here. Sidney Moncrief, a uh, great player, great two-way player, um, really made the Bucks competitive during the 80s. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Two-time Defensive Player of the Year, by the way. David Thompson at number 82. I'm a little bit scratching my head why they have David Thompson at 82. And um, they have people like Nate Thurman and Lenny Wilkins, like 92 and 93. I don't get it. I mean, who would actually say that David Thompson was a better player than Nate Thurman, right? It doesn't make any sense for me. Uh, yeah, this guy, um, four-time All-Star, which is like the years he played in Denver were good, uh, but you know he's and he scored 73 points a game before. But I wouldn't put him this early, 82, just because he his career uh, kind of like he didn't have a good prime, right? He got um, addicted to crack, and then uh, his career started falling down. So. I wouldn't put him this high, 82. Chris Mullen, 83. Again, um, he is above all these Hall of Famers that they put below them, so I don't I don't agree with that. Um, the actual spot I don't really have a problem with, but it's just the fact that they put all these Hall of Famers below them. Uh, Dennis Johnson, 84. I'm fine with this. I think Dennis Johnson, Dennis Johnson is a really underrated player. You know, led the Supersonics to a title. Great defensive player. Uh, a little bit underrated, actually. But uh, I'm fine with the spot, number 84. Okay, number 85, Dave DeBusher, another great defensive player. Another guy who was top, uh, part of the NBA's 50 greatest celebration, by the way. Uh, Dave DeBusher. He was, um, yeah, six-time all-defensive all, uh, all first team, so great defensive player. Uh, great, really good rebounder as well. A little bit underrated, but I'm okay with him at this spot. I just think that he was, you know, maybe slightly better than this. Okay, Chris Bosh at number 86. I kind of have a problem with this. Chris Bosh, really? Like, you'll see a lot of Hall of Famers be ranked lower than these guys, right? Uh, a lot of 50, NBA's 50 greatest be like, ranked lower than these guys. I don't think Chris Bosh is better than, um, than some of the other players we'll see later on this list. I'll come back to this. Number 87, Chauncey Billups. Um, I think Ben Wallace should probably be in the spot um, because I think Ben Wallace had more of an impact on those mid-2000s Pist Pistons teams, which won the title. Um, I mean, those Pistons teams were really great defensive teams, and um, and Ben Wallace really was the anchor of that team, not Cha not Chauncey Billups. So I would actually swap Chauncey Billups with Ben Wallace here. So I, I don't agree that Chauncey Billups should be here. I think it should be Wallace instead. Okay, here's where I had the problem. Number 88, Billy Cunningham. Okay, this is a guy actually um, I had as an honorable mention in my list because I think he was like a 60s player, top 60s player, right? Like. The fact that they put him 88 all time, like and Nate Thurman 92, like both of those players, I think deserve to be much much higher. I think he's underrated. Uh, I mean, 21 points per game, 10 rebounds a game, four assists a game, and he they put him below Chris Bosh. They put him below David Thompson. Like, I don't know anyone in their right mind would take uh, Chris Bosh over Billy Cunningham. I mean, this guy was an MVP in the ABA, right? They even have that here, ABA MVP. So, like, why is he below Chris Bosh? It doesn't make any sense. Like, this guy should be ranked way higher. So I think that's why this, these these old players, they get really disrespected here. Number 89, Yao Ming. I don't agree with this one really that much either because Nate Thurman is better than Yao Ming. I mean, who is going to take Yao Ming over Nate Thurman? A guy who averaged 15 and 15, right? This guy, 19, 9.2, right? Which is fine stats, but... Still, he's not the defensive player that Nate Thurman was, and um, yeah, I'm not. I don't think Yao Ming's better than Nate Thurman. Um, and yeah, number ninety, Paul Arizon, another guy who's part of the NBA's fifty greatest, along with Billy Cunningham, Nate Thurman, Lenny, Lenny Wilkins, Dave DeBusher. You will see all these NBA fifty greatest guys part of that celebration fall all the way down to the eighties and nineties, which is just bizarre. Paul Arizon actually had in the top fifty of all time so it's really he really got disrespected here uh putting all the way down to 90 this guy led philadelphia warriors to a title back in um 1955 right or 1956 actually so yeah the fact that he led him to a title should have won finals mvp if they had him back then um yeah it's just i don't know why uh this guy's clearly one of the best players of the 1950s and they have him all the way down to number 90 that's crazy. He he was easily um him and Neil Johnston, which is another underrated player by the way. Um Neil Johnston's not even on this list, which is nuts. Um yeah, they were the leader of the Philly Warriors, which really get disrespected. So uh yep, that's uh my opinions on that. A lot of great players that were underrated. A lot of modern players that were overrated. 
All right, 71 to 80. Pete Maravich at 71. I'm, I think Pete Maravich should be a little bit lower. Just because he never, he was a great player. I'm not saying he's not talented. He was a great player. Um, the fact is, though, that he never made it really very far in the playoffs. Um, and the fact that, well, his prime was very short, right? Because he got injured. I mean, he has great career stats, 24, 4, and 5. Um, but, yeah, the fact that he got injured, had a very short prime, never went to the the finals or anything, I wouldn't put him 71. I mean, you have a lot of Hall of Famers below this guy, right? So, I wouldn't put him this high. And number 72, Adrian Dantley. Again, I would put Dantley over Pete Maravich for sure, because Dantley had a much better career. Um, this guy actually led the league in scoring twice, I think. Two-time NBA scoring champion. And uh, I know Pete Maravich was named to the NBA's 50 greatest players, and Adrian Dantley was not. But I think Adrian Dantley should have been, you know, honorable mention or something. He should have been on the next 10 or next 20 if they add to the NBA's 50 greatest. Um, I definitely think he's better than Pete Maravich. So, yeah. 73 to Kemba Motombo. I'm okay with this. Uh, All-time great rebounder, all-time great defender. Um basically the modern day Wes Unseld, um, not Wes Unseld, so you're very, very similar to Dennis Rodman, very similar to uh, Ben Wallace in a way. Um, yeah, I guess you can say, yeah, he's just, he does all the, the dirty work and um, I think second all-time block shots, so I'm fine with that. <clears throat> Number 74, Dolph Shays, this is another one that got disrespected. I mean, Dolph Shays was uh, NBA's 50 greatest players, right? Um, and one of the best players of the 50s led the Syracuse Nationals to a championship in 1955 averaged 18.5, 12 rebounds a game, 3 assists a game and uh, definitely one of the greatest players of the 50s, how does he get disrespected all the way down to 74 I mean, he was part of the NBA's 50 greatest also part of my 50, top 50 and um, if you add up his uh, his rings you know, he should have had a finals MVP and uh you know his stats. He's definitely higher than um, than this. Seventy four. I think he's top fifty actually. So that's what I mean. That you're kind of disrespecting old players here. I mean the fact that they're going to have George Mikan by the way, which is George, they're going to have George Mike in the top fifty, and Dolph Shays falls all the way down to seventy four. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. All right, number seventy five. Um, just below Dolph Shays is Blake Griffin, which is you know I think I think Blake Griffin should be ranked way lower than Dolph Shays, but anyways. <clears throat> I guess he's a really good player here. I mean, uh, the ranking itself I don't have a problem with. It's just the problem that ESPN puts so many great Hall of Famers uh, at this low of a position, and I'm really, I really have a problem with that. They, sh they rank so many great players like Dolph Shays and Paul Arizon so low on the list, and um, yeah, I just can't, can't get over that. All right, number 76, Nate Atani Archibald. Um, yeah, again, this is another player I put in the 60s, you know? Like, <clears throat> I put him not, not in the 70s, but in the 60s. So I think I'm okay, I'm a little bit okay, but then again, I think he's a l still a little bit underrated too. I mean, this is a guy who's one of the best small players of all time, averaged 19, 7.4 uh, assists a game while being just 6 foot 1. The same, the same size as Isaiah Thomas, basically, uh, and led the league in assists and scoring at the same time. So... Yeah, I don't know. He's part of the NBA's top 50 greatest, right? So I think he should be a little bit higher than that. So a little bit underrated there. Joe Dumars, 77. Um, again, I think Joe Dumars, little bit... He, he is a little bit overrated, I think, in my opinion, because of the fact that uh, he played on the championship Pistons teams. I mean, I could actually think of much better great defensive point guards uh, or shooting guards, right? of the 1980s, like Sidney Moncrief or Dennis Johnson, that I th in my opinion is, is better than Joe Dumars. I mean, would you take Joe Dumars, Dennis Johnson, or Sidney Moncrief? I bet Joe Dumars would be last in there. And here he's ranked the highest, so it doesn't really make any sense for me. Um, I think Moncrief and Johnson are better than him. All right, Sam Jones at 78. Uh, this is another one I have a problem with. Um, Sam Jones, part of the 50 greatest players of all time celebration, the, be the best, uh, one of the second or third best player on the 1960s Celtics, which won 11 championships. Sam Jones won 10 championships. That's the second most all-time by any player, right? Eight, and uh, 18 points per game, 5 rebounds a game, 2.5 assists per game, which are pretty good for that time. 
um, yeah, he's just, he's one of the best shooting guards of the 60s, right next to Jerry West. And the fact that he's all the way down here at 78, I don't understand that. Like, I have him top 50 all time. I have him, like, and Bill Simmons in his ranking put him right beside George Gervin. That's how good Sam Jones is. He's a super clutch player. Um, and without him, the Celtics wouldn't win, like, half the championships. So, I have no idea why they rank Sam Jones so low. Only 78. So, I highly disagree with this one. I think he's ranked way too low. He's very underrated. Okay, number 79, Cherry Lucas. Again, I think he's a little bit ranked too low here. Uh, just like Nate Thurmond and the rest, uh, I think they should be ranked higher. Um, I actually have him in the 60s, I think, just because he was such a great rebounder. 17 points per game, 15.6 rebounds per game. Um, he was basically, uh, compared to Nate Thurmond, he was actually a little bit better, for sure, I think, because he uh, he's a little bit better of an offensive player than Nate Thurmond is. And uh, he made more... Um, I think he, yeah he made like more all uh, all NBA selections all stars than Nate Thurman did so he's definitely higher than Thurman but still 79 no still a little bit too low for him he is uh 15 15.6 rebounds per game is one of the top five I think rebounding uh, numbers of all time so that basically counts for something like 20 rebounds per game before in a season he definitely deserves to be a little bit higher than that um, and then Grant Hill at number 80 which I am actually okay with this one, the actual ranking, and um, yeah, it's fine, because Grant Hill was absolute beast when he was in the Pistons, uh, in the first years with, uh, yeah, with the Pistons, he was just a beast, so I'm okay with that. Basically, he was Tracy McGrady, I guess you could compare him to that, in terms of, uh, in terms of lost promise, I guess, um, yeah, because both of them got injured, and who knows how great they, they would have been if they didn't get injured, all right. So a bunch of players I disagree with uh, here, the rankings, especially the older players I feel are really underrated. 71 to 80, and then we have 61 to 70 here. Manny Ginobili at 61, okay, I have a problem with this. Like, Manny Ginobili at 61 is crazy. Like, this guy, he never was the first option on his team, right? He was always a role player. Um, and I realize he is a great, uh, a great shooting guard, right, for the San Antonio Spurs, and he's a great clutch player, but... 61 all time like he the ESPN has this ranking him ahead of Sam Jones like a 10 time NBA champion They have him ahead of Nate Thurman ahead of Billy Cunningham ahead of Jerry Lucas I have Dolph Shays like they have Manny Ginobili ahead of all those players. It's just crazy like si He's not 61 all time. He's like more like in the 80s. That's where I would put him. So he's definitely um, overrated here So yeah, I mean I would definitely take a whole bunch of players over him like tiny Archibald um, yeah, Dolph Shays, um, Otis Gilmore, who we'll see later in this list. Um, yeah, I'll take them all over Manny Ginobili, for sure. 62, Alex English. Um, I actually think Adrian Dantley was a better player than Alex English. Uh, I think as a scorer, um, if you look at the stats, Adrian Dantley had better stats. Uh, better Had two scoring titles, Alex English only had one, right? Um, the only difference is Alex English kind of led his team, and uh, Dantley... Well, he did. Danley actually led a team too. He led the Utah, the Utah Jazz. Um, Alex English just stayed with one team. That's really the only difference. Um, but I would actually take. I would actually swap the places here. I swap Alex English with Adrian Danley here, because I think Adrian Danley deserves this deserves this spot more and is slightly better than Alex English. All right, and number sixty three, Tracy McGrady. Again, this is based on promise, right? Unfulfilled. Tracy McGrady was the best. Uh, shooting guard for a period of time in the in the NBA when he was with the Orlando Magic, uh, T Mac, really good player, went in his prime. Um, just he got injured, right? So he never got to fulfill his promise. Uh, again, it's really hard to rank this guy, but I would actually put him closer to Pete Maravich, because closer to Pete Maravich and Grant Hill, I think that's where I would put them, along with the other players that had great promise, just. They didn't have playoff success, um, and they were injury riddled. So I would put them closer to in the rankings to Pete Maravich and uh, Grant Hill. Not here though. Okay, 64 Dennis Rodman. I'm totally okay with this. Uh, Dennis Rodman was a great player. Um, you know, all-time great defender, all-time great rebounder, uh, and I'm totally okay with him being at 64. Even though people call him one-dimensional, he's just uh, he's just amazing at what he does. All right, 65 Alonzo Mourning. I'm also okay with this. Um, yeah, just a slightly worse defender than Rodman, um, and of course not as good as rebounding, but definitely a better scorer than uh, Rodman was. 
So I'm I'm okay with Alonso Mourning being here. Uh, they're higher than Dikembe Motombo, which I guess is okay as well, um, because they're better offensive players. But anyways, yeah, I'm okay with that. Chris Weber at 66. I think Chris Weber is really underrated. I mean, he isn't even a Hall of Fame yet, along with uh, Moncrief and Kevin Johnson. Well, Kevin Johnson, by the way, is not even on this list, I think, uh, which is crazy. But yeah, Chris Weber is only at 66. Uh, I think that's okay. Like, yeah, that's fair. I, I think Chris Weber is actually pretty underrated for what he did. He took that Sacramento Kings almost to a finals, right? They almost beat the Lakers with, Sha with uh, Shaq and Kobe, so that's pretty impressive. All right, 67, Dwight Howard. I actually think Dwight Howard is really underrated here because look, uh, look at what he did for Orlando, right? I'm not talking about Dwight Howard right now. I'm talking about Dwight Howard over his entire career, 18 points per game, 13 rebounds per game, two blocks a game, right, and a 58% field goal percentage. Um, that's crazy. Like, three-time defensive player of the year, and what, he led the league in rebounds five times, right? Led the league in blocks twice, uh, two times, right? So this is a guy that actually had a pretty good career. Uh, people just hate on on Dwight Howard because he's so-called soft. But the thing is, his career is actually pretty good. And he's definitely better than 67, I think. I actually have him number 50 all time. But yeah, I mean, as a defensive player alone, Dwight Howard, I think you would take him over Alonzo Mourning, wouldn't you? I mean, who would actually take Alonzo Mourning over Dwight Howard? Like, this guy had one more defensive player of the year. Better rebounds, better uh, points per game. Um, he's better than Alonzo Mourning. I don't know why he's below him. So yeah, I think Dwight Howard should be in the 50s. He doesn't deserve to be this low. So I think he's actually underrated here. Uh, okay, 68 Bob Lanier, um, great player. Never got to go to the, again, never got to go to the championship or finals, but um, totally great player. 20 points per game, two, 10 rebounds, two assists a game. Um, and yeah, I'm okay with this ranking 68. Bob Lanier, I don't have a problem with that. He was uh, one of the great 70 centers. And number 69, Vince Carter. Hmm, don't know what to think about this one. But I think Vince Carter should be a little bit lower. Because he just... He had he could have done more, but... You know, never went to a, a finals. Never really won a ring. And uh, definitely not as good as Tracy McGrady in his prime. But I think it should be like in the 70s. I don't really put him 69. I mean, I'm not totally against this ranking, but uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Vince Carter is just, he's just a good player. You know, he's not never really a great player. He's just a good player. Um, I would put him in the 70s, actually, not really here. Okay, number 70, Artis Gilmore. Uh, here's the thing, I have a little bit of a problem with that, with Artis Gilmore at number 70, considering I have him in the top 50 all time. And uh, this guy is so underrated. He was never in the NBA's top 50 greatest celebration. But I think that's because he played in the ABA. And if you look at it, uh, if you combine his ABA stats, the fact that he was a uh, ABA champion, ABA MVP, five-time All-ABA selection, um, combine his ABA and NBA career, he's definitely a top 50 player. But if you subtract his ABA career, then I'm okay with this rank. I think the um, ESPN ranked this just based on NBA ranking, which also explains why Billy Cunningham is so low, um, and Rick Barry later on this list, but yeah, I think that ABA players really get shafted. I mean, Mel Daniels isn't on this list at all, totally great player. Roger Brown isn't on this list, another totally great player. The ABA players just get completely shafted and forgotten. Um, and Artis Gilmore, you know, they didn't count his ABA stats, so I guess if you don't count his ABA, he's okay. I'm okay with him at number 70, but if you do count his ABA stats and, and awards, then he's definitely top 50. And um, yeah, all these guys below Manu Ginobili, apparently. I mean, Dwight Howard is not... I mean, Manu Ginobili is, better than, is not as good as Dwight Howard. I would take Dwight Howard over Manu Ginobili, wouldn't you? I mean... Imagine if Tim Duncan and Dwight Howard were playing together, right? Like, and Tony Parker and, and all those rest of the guys. Like, I definitely think that, um, yeah, Dwight Howard, Chris Weber, Alonzo Mourning, Dennis Rodman, all these guys are better than um, Man Ginobili. But anyways, yep, that's my, uh, that's 61 to 70. 51 to 60. Okay, let's go. Reggie Miller at 51 disagree with this I think he's overrated um, if you look at Reggie Miller's career he even though he led his team uh, for a long time never 
Never won a ring, never won a championship. Three-time All-NBA third team. He was never even second team or first team, which means he was never the top shooting guard in the NBA at any point in his career. Uh, five-time All-Star, and that's it. Like, no rings, no MVPs, no finals MVPs, and yet on this list, he's ahead of a lot of Hall of Famers, a lot of legends, as you as you will see later on this list. So, just like Manu Ginobili, I think he's a little bit under, he's a little bit overrated here. Um, Reggie Miller, yeah, 51. I would put him maybe in the 70s or 80s, actually. I wouldn't put him in the 50, in like just just on the verge of the top 50. No. All right, Bob McAdoo, 52. I'm actually okay with that. I like Bob McAdoo. Um, MVP, great, great winner, uh, scorer. Um, I'm okay with that ranking. Weston Seld at 53, I'm, I'm a little bit disagreeing with. And also, Dave, uh, Bernard King and Dave Cowens at 55. So I'm going to talk about Weston Seld and Dave Cowens in the same breath because they are kind of similar players. Um, both of them are, in my opinion, top 15 centers of all time. Dave Cowens and Weston Seld a little bit underrated in my opinion, because, um, well, both of them led, both of them have rings, and both of them have MVPs, and you can't really say that, like, for Reggie Miller, so why is Reggie Miller ranked ahead of Weston Sell in, in front of Dave Cowens? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, those, I think they were far better players than Reggie Miller, and I have them both in my top 50, and, uh, yeah, Cowens, both of them were top, top centers in the 70s. Cowens, was one of the greatest centers ever to play, averaging 18-14-4 for his career, which is similar to Bill Walton, by the way. And, um, yeah, same with one, with Ansel either. One of the, Ansel was one of the best centers um, to pass in the game, was one of the best passing centers in the game. Um, and, yeah, I have similar feelings. Um, so, yeah, uh, yeah, Wes Ansel, Dave Cowan should be ranked higher. They'll be underrated here. Bernard King, a 54. I put him a little bit lower than that because even though he was great in his prime, he got injured, which puts him kind of in the same breath as Pete Maravich because Pete Maravich got injured too. And uh, I would put him, like, in a similar rank to Pete Maravich, I guess. I think Bernard King and Pete Maravich should be ranked similarly. Both were incredible players, incredible scorers, but uh, they got injured in their prime, so... I guess similar to Tracy McGrady as well. So you can make them similar to Tracy McGrady and Grant Hill around that time. All right. Talked about Dave Cowens already. Paul Gasol, 56. Um, I think Paul Gasol is pretty underrated. So um, I think he's okay at this spot. He's a really underrated player. Yeah. But he's actually fairly ranked here. Robert Parrish, uh, 57. I'm okay with that as well. Uh, just because his longevity was amazing. And uh, as long as he's ahead of Dave Cowan, I mean, as long as he's below Dave Cowan's, I would. Dave Cowan's is definitely better than than Parrish at his peak, for sure. Uh, Tony Parker at 58, I'm also okay with. Tony Parker is really underrated as a point guard, but he's one of the best point guards of all time. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, Carmelo Anthony at 59, eh, I don't know about that. A little bit lower than 59, I would put him, but. Probably similar to, to 60s, early 60s, mid 60s. I would pro probably put Carmelo Anthony. Uh, yeah, I would put him in a similar spot as Dominic Wilkins, actually, because to me, Dominic Wilkins and Carmelo Anthony are similar players. They have similar stats, they're similar scores, and um, they both didn't win a, wing, a ring. So I'll put him in a similar category there. Earl Monroe, I think, is a little bit overrated here. I think Earl Monroe is like. The guy was only all NBA first team one time, and I don't think he deserves number sixty, huh? Like ahead of ahead of players like Sam Jones. I don't think so. I think Sam Jones was definitely better than Earl Monroe. Um, not to say Earl Monroe isn't a great player, but there's players on this list that were that were better than him that were ranked lower. All right, so yeah, Reggie Miller, no, not fifty one. Okay, let's go through the top fifty now. Let's take a break. Okay. All time NBA rank players 46 to 50. Let's go. Allen Iverson at 46. Surprisingly, I think Iverson is a little bit underrated on this list. I think he should be higher. I mean, can you really say that there is 45 better players than Allen, Allen Iverson? I don't think so. Like, Allen Iverson was, um, even though he's not that efficient, I realized that 
and I realized that advanced metrics are not really kind to him because he was so inefficient. But um, as a player who has really a lot of heart and guts, and uh, that has that really leadership mentality, you can't really quantify that in stats. Um, the same with Isaiah Thomas, who you'll see later on. Um, you can't quantify these things in stats, which is why like the advanced metrics may place him lower, but personally, I think Iverson should be a little bit higher than that. And most people actually would agree with me when they think that Iverson should be a little bit higher than that. Um, he is the top 30 player in my view. I put him actually in the top, what is it? Yeah, I put him in the top 30. So yeah, no idea why he's ranked this low. I think, yeah, it's just because advanced metrics place him this low, but I think he's a little bit better than that. Uh, should be in, 30, in the 30s or 20s at least. All right, George Gervin, 47. Uh, I don't know, I, I put him a little bit higher than, I put George Gervin a little bit higher than this, but I guess I'm okay with it. It's not as bad as the snub with Iverson. All right, Willis Weed at 48. Tell me, let's see, for me, this is a debate. Willis Reed or Patrick Ewing, which was the greatest Nick? For me, it was Willis Reed because he had all the hardware. He had two rings, one MVP, two finals MVPs, right? Patrick Ewing had nothing. But Patrick Ewing played in, um, let's see. So people defend Patrick Ewing because he played with a worse team than uh, Willis Reed did. Willis Reed had a really Hall of Famer team that he played with. Uh, Patrick Ewing did not. So that's why I guess people... Um, discount Willis Reed's finals MVPs and MVPs because of that but I don't know I think Willis Reed was still a great player and I'm not totally sure that Ewing was better than him um, Ewing is actually ranked much higher than Willis Reed on this list which I disagree with um, I think he's ranked higher just because he had a longer career uh, I don't even have Patrick Ewing in my top 50 he's an honorable mention but I don't have him in my top 50 but I have Willis Reed in my what top 40 player so yeah I think Reed's a little bit underrated here. Should be a little bit higher than that. If not better than Patrick Ewing, he should be ranked a little bit closer to Patrick Ewing. Okay, Russell Westbrook at 49. I don't have Russell Westbrook in my top 50, but I guess I can understand where they're coming from. He is a really, really great player. Um, and I think when his career finishes, he'll be top 50 all time. Ray Allen, top 50. <sighs> Again, I don't have Ray Allen in my top 50. I think he's like a top 60s or 70s, maybe even 80s player. But as long as he should be ahead of Reggie Miller because he is a better player than Reggie Miller. Um, he's basically Reggie Miller, except he has, you know, his records are higher. He has a, he has a rings. Um, basically, he is like Reggie Miller, but better. So as long as he's ranked ahead of Reggie Miller. But yeah, I don't think he's top 50, in my opinion. All right, so that's 46 to 50. Let's go 41 to 45 now. All right, 41, I have Gary Payton. I have all the respect for Payton, but um, you'll see later why. I don't think he should be ranked this high, a little bit this high. Uh, I think Walt Frazier is better than Gary Payton. Um, and Walt Frazier is actually ranked lower than Gary Payton on this list. And I think Walt Frazier is definitely better than Gary Payton. So. Yeah, take it as you will. No offense to Gary Payton, but I think they should be swapping spots. All right, Bill Walton, 42. I'm okay with this because Walton was an incredible player in his prime, but because of the injuries, yeah, um, I definitely think Walton should be top 50 all the time. Um, but where he is in the top 50 depends on how much you think a prime matters in a career, but I'm okay with this, 42. James Worthy at 43. I think James Worthy is a little bit... Uh, I think James Worthy is a little bit overrated, actually, because he was never the first option on his team. And as great a small forward as he is, I don't think he's better than Dominique Wilkins. I mean, who would you take? Dominique Wilkins, who led his teams for like a decade, or James Worthy, who was the third option for an all-time great team? I mean, I guess if they swap spots, I guess James Worthy could have led a team as well, but... Um, it is what it is. Dominique did lead a team, so I would take Dominique Wilkins over James Worthy. So I think he's a little bit high in the spot. Dominique Wilkins at 44 again. I would swap places. Um, I don't have James Worthy in my top 50 actually because of his lack of uh, individual achievements because he played with Magic and Kareem. Um, but Dominique Wilkins also wasn't in my top 50 either. I would have Wilkins ahead of Worthy for sure though. 
So I think Wilkins is a, Wilkins and Worthy should be swapping spots here. And um, Carmelo Anthony should be ranked around, amongst them as well. Because I think that he is uh, around the similar ranking. Paul Pierce, 45. I think Paul Pierce uh, a little bit low here. Uh, I would probably put him higher than higher than 45. A little bit higher. <clears throat> on this list, I think. On, on my list, actually, I'm fine, I'm fine with Paul Pierce at 45. I just don't think that Wilkins and Worthy is better than Paul Pierce. But I think at 45 is fine. Yeah, I just I just don't think that Wilkins and Worthy is better. Alright, that's it for... 41 to 45, let's go, keep going. 36 to 40. Alright. Uh, Clyde Drexler, 36. I don't have a problem with this. It's fine. Clyde Drexler was a really good player. Alright, 37, Rick Barry. I do have a problem with this because uh, I do think Rick Barry is the top 25 player of all time. I think he's really underrated. Um, because he spent four years in the ABA, those stats don't and awards don't really count. And uh, but even so, a guy who averaged 36 points a game in his second season in the league, I think he definitely deserves to be higher than 37. He led the Warriors on his back to a title, averaging just 36 and six. That's incredible. And he should have won an MVP that year, but he didn't because he was voted on by players back then. Um, and yeah, the second best player on that Warriors squad was a rookie Jamal Wilkes, and that was it. Like, if you talk about a guy carrying a team, Rick Barry carried that team. And on a lot of lists, he's top 25, including Bill Simmons' list. So I'm going to... He, he's definitely top 25 for me. So he should he should be definitely ranked higher than 37. A little bit underrated there. Oh, wait. Walt Frazier. This is what I'm talking about. 38. Um, yeah, I think Walt Frazier is better than Gary Payton, for sure. So I'm, I'm glad that he's ranked here higher than Gary Payton. Um, but, again... Uh, yeah, I guess it's okay, actually, 38. Yeah, I'm okay with Walt Frazier being at 38. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I'm fine with that. All right, 39, Bob Cousy. I think a little bit underrated. I think I compiled a metric adding up uh, players' uh, stats and awards and stuff and combined them together. And Bob Cousy, surprisingly, was a top 10 player on that list. Surprised me. Because... He was a one-time MVP. He led the assist league in assists eight times, which is incredible. I think that's like John Stockton, like, and that's what put him above to the top ten on that list. I think, but either way, um, I would put him a little bit ahead of Walt Frazier. I don't think Walt Frazier is ahead of Bob Cousy. I think Bob Cousy has had more impact and deserves to be a better player. The problem with the ESPN rankings is that they don't consider greatness in their rankings. They only look at uh, advanced metrics, advanced stats like per and win shares and stuff, but that really fails to capture the historical legacy of players. So, um, yeah, I think Bob Cousy should, is a little bit underrated here. He should be he should be higher than thirty nine. And by the way, six rings. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, Bob Cousy top five point guard for me. Barry Rick Barry is a top five small forward for me. Number 40, Elvin Hayes. I'm okay with this. No problems. He's a great player. Um, deserves that spot. All right. 31-35. Let's go. Kevin McHill, 31. I don't know. I think Kevin McHill is a little bit overrated at this spot. I don't have McHill in my top 50. I have him as an honorable mention. But the reason why is because he has a lack of individual achievements. Look at his individual achievements here, right? Great defensive player. Sixth man of the year, seven time All Star, one time first team. So he's only the best power forward in the league one time. And his career stats, nothing special 18, 7, and 2 blocks a game. Great field goal percentage, but, and he's an incredible post player. I mean, he is, he's one of the best at that. But 31 all time? I don't know. That's a little bit too high for me. Um,. I don't think he's uh yeah I don't even think he's a top 50 player but 31 all time wow yeah he's a little bit high right there I just can't go over get over his lack of MVPs no finals MVPs all NBA only once um and he's higher on this list than Alvin Hayes I would probably take Alvin Hayes over Kevin McHale yeah all right Patrick Ewing at 32 again uh, on my on my Willis Reed rant I said Willis Reed should be closer to Patrick Ewing Patrick Ewing 
is at 32. Willis Reed at 48. I think Willis Reed should be a little bit higher. Either that or Patrick Ewing should be a little bit lower, but they should be closer together because I don't think the gap between Reed and Ewing is that big. I think Ewing might be a little bit overrated or Willis Reed a little bit underrated, but one of those is true. So yeah, that's my thoughts on that. George Mikan at 33. Again, I'm not sure how ESPN compiles these rankings because George Mikan is, let's see, Dolph Shays was ranked in the 70s and Paul Arizon at number 90. Otis Gilmore also around that spot. How is George Mikan number 33? Like. If you want to talk about underrated guys, talk about Neil Johnston. Neil Johnston's not even on this list. And he was one of the top win shares. If you use advanced metrics, he was top one of the top win shares in the 50s. How is he not on this list at all? And George Mikan is number 33. I mean, this was a guy that that played um, in an era without a shot clock. Like, I don't know how you would rank this guy. But is he better than a lot of the guys I went through? I don't think so. <laughs> in terms of legacy, yes, but in terms of legacy, why are you ranking Kuzi so low and George Mikan so high? I don't get it, right? Then Kuzi should be ranked higher. Paul Ayers and Dolph Shea should be ranked higher, you know? Don't get why George Mikan is ranked so high, but those other guys aren't. You gotta stick to like one metric ESPN. Oh wait, 34, Bob Pettit. Again, Bob Pettit is definitely better than George Mikan. And why is he ranked lower? He's, re he's really underrated on this list, because in my opinion, and actually my stats compile list Bob Pettit was top 20 all time if you look at his stats 26 16 and 3 who else has those kind of stats two-time MVP led his team to a ring would have had finals MVP if they had it back then two-time scoring champion rookie of the year nine-time all-nba like how is he how is he worse than George Mike how's George Mike and better than Bob Pettit I don't understand um and, and at that, if you're talking about that, how is Kevin McHale better than Bob Pettit? Like, Bob Pettit was was the best power forward of the sixty of the fifties and sixties. There is no one better than him, right? And you're saying Kevin McHale and George Mikan were better than Bob Pettit? I don't think so. Yeah, I think he's underrated there. Um, and by the way, he was the only one to beat Bill Russell in the finals too. Jason Kidd at 35. Um, we can come back to this later, but I don't understand why Jason Kidd is so much worse than Steve Nash on this list. Um, you'll see there's a, there's a gap between Jason Kidd and Steve Nash on this list. And personally, Jason Kidd is a better player than Steve Nash is. I mean, I've made this argument before, but Jason Kidd has one ring, and he's a much better defender, and he's a much better all-around player than Steve Nash is. Um, higher total assists and steals, and the only thing Nash was better at was shooting. And even that's even that's not really like a point guard's thing, you know? Point guard's uh, job is to assist. And Jason Kidd has higher all-time assists as well. So, yeah, I don't understand that. Jason Kidd has all-around better stats, better defender, a ring. I don't understand why he's ranked lower than Steve Nash. He's a little bit underrated on this list. Okay, let's go do number 26 to 30 so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, 26, Isaiah Thomas. This is um, one of debate, point of debate because advanced metrics don't like Isaiah Thomas because he wasn't a good shooter. But the problem is that Isaiah Thomas was really the leader of a team, right? And you look at his stats, 19-9, two steals a game. Um, I know he has the same shooting percentage as Kobe Bryant, which means he's, he's kind of inefficient, but that doesn't mean um, he should be really that low. Although 26 all time is, is fair, I think. I think 26 for Isaiah Thomas is fair. I just think that um, ESPN was thinking about putting him lower because of um, the advanced metrics don't like him. And I don't think that's fair because uh, you can't quantify the intangibles. And Isaiah Thomas is one of those intangibles guys, you know, that gives a lot more on his court than his stats might suggest. Okay, Dwayne Wade, 27. I'm okay with that. He's. I also put him the same spot, I think, on my list. John Havlicek, 28. Disagree with that. Uh, I think he's really underrated on this list. He has eight rings, great all-around player, basically no flaws. Like, he has great defense. He's eight-time all-defensive team, great in the clutch. I had him at number 16 on my list, ahead of Elgin Baylor, and he's number 28 here. Like, he's so underrated here. Um, same with Rick Barry. Like, Rick Barry and John Havlicek really got shafted here in this in these rankings. Uh, I really think he should, they should be higher than that. All right, and... Yeah, I think he's underrated. 
have a check. Uh, Chris Paul, 29. Yeah, I guess I can see why he's this high, because advanced metrics really like Chris Paul. He is one of the greatest point guards ever. Definitely higher than Steve Nash. I don't know if he's higher than Jason Kidd yet, but he's higher than Steve Nash for me. So, yeah, but Jason Kidd is really underrated on this list anyway. Okay, now we get to Steve Nash, number 30, which is what I was talking about in my Jason Kidd rant. Why is, why is Steve Nash five spots higher than Jason Kidd? I don't understand. Like, why? Like... 30 and Jason Kidd is 35 the only thing Nash is better at is shooting and literally that's it no championships not a great defender can really only assist and shoot but can't he can't rebound like Jason Kidd can so yeah I don't understand that like J Jason Kidd should be ahead of Steve Nash for sure I think all right so I think Nash is a little bit overrated and uh, Kidd underrated let's go to 21 to 25 25 Scotty Pippen now this is one I really had a big problem with because I had a, a lot of debate with people on Facebook about this I had, a, I had a major issue with this ranking about Scotty Pippen. Why is he so high? Why is he higher than John Havlicek? Why is he higher than Rick Barry? Would anyone really okay you line up all the small forwards right at a table or in, in the playground, right? Would you really pick Scotty Pippen over John Havlicek or Rick Barry like I wouldn't like I had a major issue because um, Scotty Pippen Here's, here's the thing, right? Here's why he's so overrated. Uh, in my rankings, I had him in the 40s, so I definitely think he's a top 50 player of all time. But top 25 player? Like, seven-time All-Star, right? No MVP, no Finals MVP, never won a ring without Jordan. Uh, basically, people's arguments for Scottie Pippen on this list, which I get on Facebook a lot. Uh, I got flamed on Facebook a lot because I thought Scottie Pippen was overrated. But this is what they said. Number one. Oh, he could lock down anybody from any era. He was just a legendary defender. Number two, without Jordan, he took the Bulls to 55 wins during Jordan's first retirement. Number three, without Pippen, Jordan would have no rings. So, the same the same argument people make for Kobe, basically. That uh, without this and this, then they have no rings. Alright, firstly, I want to address the first point. People exaggerate Pippen's defense. The thing is, if Pippen was so good at defending, how come he never produced a Defensive Player of the Year award when he was in the league, what, 16 seasons? 16? You're telling me this was a legendary defender that can lock down any position and he never got a Defensive Player of the Year award, right? And yeah, that's that's um, pretty astounding why people would make that argument. Uh, like, I, I realize he's a good defender. He's 10-time All-Defensive first team. He's a great, I'm not saying he's a bad defender, but he's not as legendary a defender as people think he is right the, these are people online thinking that he can guard freaking Wilt Chamberlain like I don't think Scottie Pippen can guard Wilt Chamberlain or Shaq you know so uh, so I looked at his stats too uh, led the league in steals whopping one time like that's it just one time even Magic led the league in steals twice he had a whopping two seasons where he had two, three steals like whoop de doo three steals a game for two seasons I mean if you look at other players, defensive players, right, in NBA history, look at Dave DeBusher, look at Bobby Jones, John Havlicek, Jerry West, Michael Jordan, Dennis Johnson, Sidney Moncrief, Michael Cooper, Gary Payton, all those guys were as great as Pippen. And they were all good as defensively as Pippen. And even Michael Cooper for the Lakers, right? Michael Cooper, he was small forward too. He was a wing defender, and he, even he had a defensive player of the year. Right? How come Michael Cooper isn't even on this list and Scottie Pippen is freaking top 25? I don't understand that. Number two, this Bulls had this guy named Horace Grant, which is who is really underrated, I think, who is actually the leader in win shares during the, the season that, that Jordan left, so 1994. And he averaged, what, 15-11 a game? 15-11 a game. So uh, people are saying that Pippen carried that team, but Horace Grant actually did a lot. And uh, I know that Pippen led the Bulls in like whatever category statistically and stuff, but he's not the only player to do that. Kevin Garnett did it in 2004, Dave Cowens did it in 1978. Um, people really assumed that Pippen could have led his own team if he was free of Jordan, but that just isn't the case. If you look at the Trailblazers with the Rockets, it just wasn't the case. Um, played with the greatest of all time. He played with Michael Jordan. If you play with the if you play with the greatest of all time, the goat, then people think you're a top 25 player of all time. And then the GOAT retires, and your scoring average goes to only 22 points a game, which is how, how much Pippen had in 1994. 
um, and also the highest scoring average he's ever had in his career, then and then you have the same team and lose to a team with only one superstar, Patrick Ewing. Uh, it's really not really not that impressive. I think, um, yeah, I just don't think he's the top 25 player of all time. Not saying he's not a great player, but um, I think if you put Havlicek or Barry with Jordan, they would just get they would get as many rings or more. So, yeah, overrated. All right, Elgin Baylor, number 24. I think he's really underrated at this spot. I mean, Elgin Baylor is a top 20 player for sure. He's not top, like, he's not number 24. He should be, like, number 15 or 16 all time. Actually, I had number 18, but anyways, should be a top 20 player. I mean, this is a guy who had 71 points a game before. He averaged 38 points a game while serving the military part-time. Averaged 27, 14, and 4 during his career. He shouldn't only rank number 24. Just one spot below Pippen is disgraceful to Baylor. <laughs> He's one of the greatest of all time. Alright. Stephen Curry at 23. Um, a lot of people had a little debate about this. They hated on ESPN for ranking Steph Curry only 23, and I agree with that. I think he's really overrated this spot. I think as good as Curry is, he is the best shooter of all time, right? As people say. Uh, greatest shooter of all time. He changed the way that people play defense on him. Um, but this guy has only been in the league like not that long and his his prime has only just started he's only been an all-star for two seasons that's it and I don't think it's it's way too early to rank him ahead of players like Wade and Isaiah and Baylor I mean and yes even Pippen like I wouldn't I wouldn't put Curry ahead of Pippen just yet I mean I would put him maybe 40s but but top 25 no I don't think Steph Curry is top 25 He's overrated right now. Kevin Durant, uh, number 22. Again, I think he's a little bit too high right now. We'll see what he does, but... Kevin Durant should be a little bit low 20s, I think. Or early 30s. I wouldn't put him, like, this high above Elgin Baylor. Elgin freaking Baylor, just yet. Alright. 21, Kevin Garnett. I'm okay with that. Yep, no problems with that. Alright. 16 to 20. Let's go. Carl Malone, number 16. Totally okay with it. That's that's where he belongs. 16. The second best power forward ever. Uh, 17, Dirk Nowitzki. I put him a little bit lower, like at number 26, I think. But um, I can see why he would be 17. Um, I don't disagree with people who put him this high. I mean, I do, I do think I underrated him a little bit. He should be a little bit higher than that. So, Dirk Nowitzki, congratulations. Number 18, Charles Barkley. Would I take Charles Barkley over Dirk Nowitzki? Probably. In his prime, I would take Charles Barkley. But if you're looking at overall career, I think Dirk Nowitzki had the better career. But I'm okay with Charles Barkley being 18. He was absolutely the second best player in the world uh, when he was in his prime. Better than Carl Malone and better than um, anyone else not named Michael Jordan. Number 19, John Stockton. I'm also okay with that. John Stockton, John Stockton was incredible. Um, higher than Isaiah Thomas? Yes, he is. Uh, I know people may disagree with me, but Stockton... Look at him, all-time leader in assists, all-time leader in steals, and um, good shooter. So you just can't can't beat that. The perfect point guard. David Robinson at number 20. I'm okay with that as well. I think I'm putting 25, but I, I realize this guy is, was amazing. If Robinson um, had a longer prime, I think he would be ranked even higher, but number 20, I'm okay with that. All right, so this is the ESP ranking, plays 11 to 15. Uh, continuing on, uh, they have Oscar Robertson at number 11, uh, which I don't disagree with. I mean, I had Oscar at the same rank. Um, they had Jerry West a little bit lower than I did. I had Jerry West actually ahead of Oscar Robertson, and that's just because I feel that Jerry West um, was a little bit more successful in going to the finals, um, and Oscar was not. He, you know, only went to two finals and one championship, the same between the two of them. Oscar had an MVP, Jerry West did not. Um, I mean, they're both really good players. But I would take Jerry West a little bit over Oscar Robertson. But, you know, they're, they're swappable because they're very, very competitive uh, at that spot. And both of them were really good for their time. Okay, so number 12, Kobe Bryant. This is the one that got everyone really fired up on social media. Predictably because um, Kobe is one of the most popular players, if not the second most popular player after Michael Jordan, right, in NBA history. So a lot of people really got fired up. Why is Kobe Bryant only number 12 when most people consider him top 10, if not top 5 all time, right? So I already argued in my video why I think Kobe Bryant is overrated and I think ESPN agrees with me in that um, 
They use advanced metrics like per and win shares to calculate these rankings, and Kobe just does not do well in those advanced uh, events metrics because you know he's not a very efficient player. Uh, he shoots only forty, you know, point four four nine percent field goal for his entire career and only 40% field goal percentage for the f for his finals career so that's not very good at all which is why he fails so much in these uh, advanced uh, stats rankings um, but ESPN surprisingly this really surprised me because they ranked Kobe even lower than I did and I I don't consider myself a big Kobe fan I put him at number nine ESPN put him at number 12, which is a little bit surprising I haven't really seen other rankings rank Kobe this low before so I was a little bit surprised too but you know, I've done this video showing why he's better than Bird, um, Dun uh, why uh, Bird, Duncan, LeBron are better than him. But um, some people, you know, I, I think it's because the young generation seen Kobe play, so they're really, uh, especially like Lakers fans, right? So they're really biased towards Kobe because they actually saw Kobe play. They didn't see the older players play, so they're biased against older older players. They have a lot of disrespect towards older players, I think, and they don't really, they kind of discount their achievements, and then they, they, they raise Kobe's achievements because they're the ones, Kobe is the one that they have saw, seen play, right? So they're a bit biased, I think. Um, but this is basically what the point I want to make. So usually online I have a lot of discussions and arguments about this kind of stuff, about LeBron versus Kobe. Usually what Kobe tards say, so the, the person who really supports Kobe and then uh, uses arguments that doesn't have any fact or logic surrounding it are called Kobe Tards. So <laughs> this is what they're called online. So what Kobe Tards usually say online when I, when I compare him to LeBron James is number one, Kobe has five rings. Number two, Kobe's scoring achievements include the 81 point game, of course, scoring 60 points five times in a row, etc., etc., all these um, third all time, you know, in scoring, uh, all these scoring achievements. Number three, Kobe's clutch and has killer instinct. Number four, Kobe is 5 2 in the finals and LeBron is 2 4. Number five, Kobe has blood, purple, and gold, so he's really loyal to his team, whereas LeBron, you know, left to go to Miami. Number six, Kobe was robbed of MVPs that year. I think Steve Nash, they said that Steve Nash robbed it from him. Number seven, Kobe didn't need another superstar to win. And number eight, Kobe carried his franchise. Let me, let me um, refute these one by one. Number one, okay, um, Kobe has five rings, so what? Uh, Bill Russell has, five, has 11 rings, Sam Jones has 10, Havlicek has eight. Uh, Tom Heinsohn has eight, Kareem has six, Jordan has six, Duncan has five, right? They all have more than five rings. No one ever brings them as much into the rings discussion as Kobe. Um, like, Kobe is the player that people discuss about rings the most out of any player, I think, in NBA history. And I think, why do people always mention Kobe's rings? I think it's because he, ha he has very little other awards, right? Like, what can you mention? His one MVP, his two finals MVPs, right? Like, they're not going to mention these other awards because Kobe doesn't have that many of them. Right, they so they're going to mention the rings, the five rings, because he has uh, more rings than than, any, than a lot of other players, and that's the the award he has of the most. So they're going to mention his rings the most, right? Um, the problem is that the uh, rings are a team accomplishment, right? And Kobe won three out of his five rings riding with Shaq in the car. So Shaq was the one who dominated the three, the first three finals, right? Won finals MVP, averaging like over 30 points a game. Um, you'll see that Shaq is actually ranked ahead of Kobe in this uh, ESPN ranking. So Shaq is ranked ahead because he was so dominant. And um, I'm pretty sure that if LeBron or any other player was playing with a prime Shaq at the time, they would have won at least three rings, right? No other top 10 NBA player uh, in the rankings has ever been a second option or role player for some part of their career. Only Kobe has. So Kobe has been only a first option for eight years of his career and people bring up Kobe's rings the most out of any any player even though that Kobe has the least reason to brag about his rings since he really only won two of them leading his team, right? So yeah, I don't get that. Number two, Kobe's scoring achievements. He also missed the most shots in NBA history, right? What does that tell you? It tells you that um, how many shots did Kobe have to take uh, on 45% efficiency the regular season, 40% in the finals to get to where he is, you know. Uh, what does it tell you about the basketball IQ of a player that purposely takes difficult shots even when easier shots are available or when he could assist to a player um, that has an easier shot? What does that tell you about the player, right? Number three, Kobe is not clutch, has missed the most clutch shots out of any, uh, out of any top 10 player. This is true. I already mentioned this in my other video, but you can go take a look, but um, it has all the detailed stats if you want. You can also Google Kobe Crunch Time Stats or Kobe Not Clutch, and you'll get tons of results about it. Um, 
that will show you that Kobe is not very clutch. He actually averaged 40% field goal percentage during his finals performance. And um, yeah, you can just see quantitatively that LeBron is more clutch than Kobe is. Um, number four, what did I say? Kobe is 5-2 in the finals, LeBron is 2-4. Again, this is related to Kobe's rings and it really doesn't matter. Um, no one cares about finals losses, like I mentioned. Um, no one cares that Jerry, lost, Jerry West lost eight finals. No one cares that Will Chamberlain has the same number of uh, finals losses as LeBron. He has the same record, 2-4, in the, in the finals, right? And no one, no one really tell, calls that out on Will Chamberlain. Why did they call it on LeBron James? So you're gonna argue that Kobe Bryant is better than Will Chamberlain because Kobe has a better finals record. You're gonna argue that John Havlicek, who is 8-0 in the finals, is better than Jordan, who is 6-0 in the finals? Like, it doesn't make any sense to compare finals records. It's ridiculous. Okay, number five is the fact that um, people think that Kobe was loyal to the Lakers. No, he wasn't. Kobe actually had a bad team from 2005 to 2007, if you remember, which was kind of his own problem, his own doing, because he drove Shaq out of, out of, the, out of the Lakers. So. Uh, if he drove Shaq out of town and then his team got bad, then he wanted to be traded because his team was crap, including to the Clippers and then um, apparently to the Bulls as well and to, uh, you know, to the Cavs for LeBron. So all these, all these trades that Kobe wanted to do, he's not loyal, he wasn't loyal. So that's the thing, people forget about that. Uh, number six, Kobe was never robbed of MVPs because he was never top three in MVP voting during those years in his prime, right? Because he was on a crap team. How could he be, how could he be an MVP, right? Um, actually, if anything, Nash was the one who robbed Shaq out of an MVP because Shaq was second place in the MVP vote during those years. He didn't rob Kobe. Number seven, um, Kobe, so number seven was Kobe didn't need another superstar to win. Yeah, he did. Of course he did. Ever heard of Shaq? Ever, ever heard of Paul Gasol? Um, without those guys, Kobe has never gone out of the first round of the playoffs. And he also had Phil Jackson as well. So LeBron obviously never had a coach like Phil Jackson or anything as dominant as Prime Shaq. All right, number eight, Kobe's a great leader for his franchise. No, he wasn't. Kobe led four out of the six worst Lakers team in NBA history. Um, the Lakers have only missed the playoffs like what, six or seven times and Kobe has been, has led four, that, four out of those teams. Like in 2005 and then um, after Kobe got injured, right? All, all the Lakers team were crap. So, and Kobe led those teams. So he, and he also took the league's highest salary which prevented the Lakers from signing free agents shot the most bricks in NBA history, lowest field goal percentage out of any player in the NBA during those last two years. And this year's farewell tour takes uh, prevents his young stars from developing. So I've already explained why LeBron and Duncan are better in pretty much any every way from stats to efficiency to being less selfish. So I'm pretty much done with that. I think Kobe's fairly ranked here at number 12. Um, he's not top 10 all time. I can, I can agree with that. I'm okay with Oscar Robertson being higher. I'm assuming, um, yeah, this is... So yeah, he, ESPN was using advanced metrics. It's not very uh, fair to him. And uh, this is also why Iverson and Isaiah are ranked lower because those two other players are also not very efficient, which is why they get ranked lower. And I think they're a little bit overrated by the public because of the eye test, which means that um, because of their so-called killer instinct, which you cannot measure by advanced metrics, they think they're better than they actually are on the court. And I think ESPN is, is, is just taking the tangibles, right? The intangibles, the fearlessness of a player, the heart of a player, um, you know, how, uh, how great a player was in this killer instinct cannot be measured by stats. And that's, so that's why Iverson, Isaiah Thomas, Kobe Bryant is ranked lower than people think. And that's, uh, that's for Kobe. Let's go on number, I've talked enough about Kobe. Let's go on to number 13, Jerry West. Um, Jerry West, I, I feel like, yeah, third best shooting guard of all time. So obviously he's gonna be below Kobe but he's just below Kobe here and that's also where I have my on my list just below Kobe because he was just a great player uh, 27 7 and 27 6 and 7 for his career um, shot actually better percentage than Kobe did and uh, yeah the NBA logo what can I say went to nine finals be it was a great equally great as a point guard and a shooting guard so I'm okay with that ranking uh, Julia Serving, again, number 14, the exact same spot I had Dr. J, so I don't have a problem with this ranking as well. Moses Malone, number 15, also okay, because the, he this is the exact same spot I put him in my ranking as well, so I'm fine with that as well. Moses and Dr. J, great, both great players. All right, now let's move on to top 10 players of all time, what ESPN ranked in the top 10, which you probably, you guys probably know, the players that haven't been mentioned. Number 10, Hakeem Olajuwon. Um, I was a little bit surprised because I, I put Hakeem a little bit lower at 12 or 13. That's where I would put him, but I'm okay with number 10 because 
you know, he was just such a great player. He basically had no flaws. Um, great offensive player, great defensive player, raised his game in the playoffs. One of the best post uh, move player of all time, really skilled, one, uh, probably the most skilled big man ever to play. So, yeah, I'm okay. Uh, all time leader in block shots, Hakeem Lajuan, number 10. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that ranking. All right, number nine, Shaq. Uh, it's a little bit weird to rank Shaq ahead of Hakeem, right? I actually think Hakeem was slightly better, but I also put Shaq ahead of Hakeem slightly for the reason that. Okay, this is the reason why. Because during those three years where Shaq was in his prime, um, I don't think that you would take Hakeem. I think that Shaq was just so dominant during those years. Um, there's no way I can take any other center of him during those years. So. Um, yeah, just because of his his dominance, fifty eight percent field goal percentage, he averaged what thirty and sixteen or something during those finals. It was, yeah, he scored at least thirty points in every game of the finals. Like that's just incredible. So at his prime, I think Shaq was definitely better than Hakeem. So I'm okay with him at number nine, even though it's a little bit higher than I expected. Okay, number eight, Duncan, Tim Duncan. I'm okay with this as well, since I think most people can have Tim Duncan in the top ten somewhere. So Tim Duncan in top 10, uh, obviously greatest power forward ever, uh, most consistently successful player ever. I had Duncan number 6 actually, because he just never missed the playoffs. Um, he's basically Magic Johnson in the power forward position. So yeah, Tim Duncan number 8, great player, um, I'm okay with this, this spot. Number 7, Bill Russell. Now this I'm a little bit surprised at, because Bill Russell is a top 5 player, isn't he? 11 championship rings, um, greatest defender of all time. Um, could be the could have been the all-time leader in block shots if they kept track of him back then, but I guess it's the lack of uh, offensive power. Although he didn't really care about scoring points, second best rebounder of all time, 22.5 per game. I'm it's a little bit surprised them. They only ranked Bill Russell number seven, huh? I thought Bill Russell would be higher than that. So yeah, um, I'm a little bit surprised at this. I'm also really surprised that obviously they ranked LeBron higher than Bill Russell. I mean. I would not rank LeBron higher than Bill Russell. So that's the beef I have with that. Um, number six, Larry Bird. Um, I'm okay with ranking LeBron ahead of Larry, or Larry, of Larry Bird because I also ranked LeBron ahead of Larry Bird. Um, so I'm okay with this spot. Larry Bird at number six. Um, yeah, great player all around. Great stats, 24, 10, and 6 um, for 12 years. And... Um, yeah, just the all-around most versatile player, one of the most versatile players ever to play the game. Probably, um, yeah, and the best white player to ever play, Larry Bird. Uh, the reason why I think LeBron is slightly better is because of his defensive aspect. Um, if not for that, I think Bird would be better. But LeBron has more MVPs, he's a better defender, more athletic, so. Alright, number five, Wilt Chamberlain. Uh, Wilt Chamberlain, I'm, I actually put above number five, but he is top five for sure. I think he should be a little bit higher though. Because, come on, like, the guy has 70 NBA records, like, 30 points per game, 23 rebounds per game, 4 assists a game as a center. He led the league in, in assists as a center before. He averaged 50 points a game, 100 points per, per game before. Uh, yeah, he scored 100 points a game before, 55 rebounds in the game before, averaged 27 rebounds per game before, averaged, what, 50, 46 minutes per game for his entire career. Like, who can even play 46 minutes a game these days? But he averaged that for his whole career. Um, he was just so dominant. Um, and he can do everything well, including assisting as a center. He actually averaged nine assists a game as a center in, in uh, 1967, I think. So, like, what center these days could average nine assists? Uh, and yeah, just dominant rebounder, dominant shot blocker. Uh, if they kept track of shots back then, he would have had so many quadruple doubles um, back then if they kept track of blocks. Um, but yeah, just dominant player. I think he should be ranked a little bit higher than that. To me, Kareem is the best center, but Will Chamberlain is very, very close to Kareem, and I can easily put him over Kareem for um, for a lot of for a lot of games. I think I would probably put Will Chamberlain if I had one game to save my life. I would put Wilt Chamberlain in three quarters of the game and then Kareem at the last quarter. Just because uh, I, Kareem's skyhook was just much more dependable than Wilt's free throws. And, and Kareem was a much better free throw shooter, right? Um, and um, yeah, Wilt's finger rolls and fadeaways, just not as good as the skyhook. But yeah, I think he should be like, what, number three or number four on people's list, Wilt Chamberlain. I actually think he's a really underrated because people 
get, people discredit Wilt Chamberlain's accomplishments because of his era, because so-called less competition, eight teams, uh, all white people, blah, 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 people were shorter. But the thing is, Wilt Chamberlain, when he was, when he was 35 years old, passed his prime, knee surgery, um, he actually blocked Kareem Skyhook several times, it's on YouTube, you can go check it. Um, he scored, what, 30 points before against Kareem, uh, 20 or more rebounds, and he actually held his own against Kareem, prime Kareem, who in 1972, you know, was had one of the greatest seasons ever. So, you know, just think about that, right? That Wilt, past his prime, was able to hold his own against Kareem. So I, I think Wilt could have dominated in any era. So, but that's just me. All right, number four, Magic Johnson. Um, really, really surprised that they ranked LeBron James ahead of Magic Johnson and, uh, and Wilt Chamberlain. But here's Magic Johnson at number four. Um, in my opinion, he's the second greatest player of all time. Uh, led his, you know, led his team to uh, nine NBA Finals in 12 years. Greatest versatile player ever. Um, triple double threat. Uh, greatest passer ever. You just have to watch some Magic Johnson highlight videos. You know how great of a passer he was. Um, just amazing passes. Um, yeah, he can do everything. Uh, these, he had 1982 NBA uh, season. He averaged what 18, 18, 9.5, 9.5. That's like the most well-rounded stats you'll find out of the modern era but uh, I think he's a little bit under here I'd, I'd put him number two or three actually magic and actually my top three would be yeah like Jordan Kareem and magic that's my top three and then Wilt depending on uh, how I feel that day <laughs> all right number three LeBron James this is the, the the contentious issue here is that people think well LeBron James uh, is actually worse than Kobe Bryant a lot of people think that a lot of people think LeBron James is worse than Larry Bird but ESPN ranked him all the way up to the top, the mountain top, the Mount Rushmore at number three. Um, yeah, I think this is too high. I think it's overrated. I mean, I'm a LeBron James fan. You can tell me, well, LeBron James is definitely the greatest player of his generation and one of the most versatile players ever to play the game. 27-7-7 for his career. Um, really, really dominant. But the thing is, He's not better than Magic Johnson. He's not better than Wilt Chamberlain. You can't tell me that. No, Magic Johnson went to nine finals in 12 years. Um, you know, put up 42, 15, and 7 as a rookie. Won an NBA Finals MVP in his first uh, season, you know, and uh, in a ring. And he has five rings. And a Wilt Chamberlain, you know, holder of 70 NBA records. You're telling me that LeBron James is better than them, than those players? No, nah, man. Like, LeBron James, as great as he is, I can see him being at best at the highest number five well no at the highest number six sorry I cannot put him uh, I cannot put him above Bill Russell either because Bill Russell was just the greatest defender ever um, the greatest team player center ever in 11 rings I can't put him above Magic Johnson Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell so at best I think LeBron should be number six I don't think he should be number three that's just too high um, and yeah, ESPN, I guess, with their advanced metrics, um, they put him um, at number three. That is a full nine spots higher than Kobe Bryant. <laughs> and uh, even though, you know, I did a video showing why I think LeBron is kind of underrated because he's hated on so much and Kobe's overrated, I think ESPN still kind of overrated LeBron here. I don't think he's number three all time just yet in his career. I mean, his career's not even done yet. And, uh, so yeah, ESPN put a bunch of modern players, I think, just way too high for uh, for their careers because they put Steph Curry at number 23, even though he's really only had uh, one and a half seasons of uh, MVP type of performance, right? That's just way too early to put him at number 23. And um, yeah, they put Kevin Durant at number 20, which I have less of a problem with, but it's still really, really high. So, or uh, actually Kevin Durant was what, number... 20 yeah 20 or 22 something uh, something like that um but still it's still way too high because they haven't played up the entire careers yet and lebron james the number three same thing i think he, he hasn't finished his career yet it's just way too high all right so moving on to number two kareem abdul jabbar right so um this one i don't have too much of a problem with because i, I love kareem and uh, he's one of my favorite players of all time and uh yeah six time mvp that's league record, 19-time All-Star, all-time NBA leading scorer, as everyone knows. Um, the most unstoppable shot in basketball, right? The hook shot, the sky hook. Uh, 24.6, 11 rebounds a game, 2.6 blocks a game, 56% field goal percentage for 20 years. I mean, this guy just dominated, um, and he was just so, so durable. And um, 
yeah, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I don't really have a problem with this. Some people may have a problem with putting like Wilt Chamberlain and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, which one's actually better. I would say that Wilt Chamberlain was definitely more dominant. Uh, Stats-wise, I mean, Wilt Chamberlain was just dominant and more dominant than Kareem. But the, pro the thing is, Kareem, what, ha what has Kareem going for it is uh, longevity. Kareem just had more longevity. I mean, I'm pretty sure if Wilt didn't retire after a 13-year career, uh, Wilt could have been the top greatest all time, even over Michael Jordan, if he didn't retire that soon. Uh, if Wilt played like maybe five more seasons, I think he would definitely be the all time greatest, no question. But because he only played 13 seasons, then um, yeah, people really discredit him because of his era and stuff. And uh, Kareem, who played in both the 70s and the 80s, have two decades, right? That people can compare him. They have less of a they don't they don't go by the era bias for Kareem that much because he was a more a more modern player than Will Chamberlain, so I think that's why Kareem gets ranked higher because, yeah, he just had a longer career than than Will did, and I'm perfectly fine with him number two, um, incredibly great player, um, arguably even better than Michael Jordan if you include his college accomplishments, which is, uh, like three time player of the year, three straight national championships in college and if you include if you include that there's, there's no way Kareem is, might be the best basketball player of all time or at least the most successful basketball player of all time right and um, yeah that's Kareem number one is obviously Michael Jordan I mean I don't even need to say anything about this everyone already knows this um, I mean who doesn't have Michael Jordan at the number one spot all time right everyone does um, and nothing more really needs to be said I mean this guy it's like he's psychologically the most competitive person ever five-time MVP uh, should have been more actually he got some MVP stolen from him uh, I think 10-time NBA scoring champion uh, defensive player of the year rookie of the year um, yeah 11-time all-NBA selection all defensive team he was just a great two-way player six rings of course six finals MVPs perfect finals record 30.1 points per game ties for the highest highest all-time with Wilt Chamberlain uh, 36 and 5 right for his career and um, yeah just um, incredible almost uh, I think if you were to go for for overall players Michael Jordan these days right, is considered the best you could make a case for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar you could make a case for Will Chamberlain because of his incredible accomplishments his 70 NBA records you could make a case for Bill Russell his 11 championships right that will never be broken I think those are the only players you could really make a case for as the greatest of all time, um, is those four players. Uh, I mean, I want to say Magic Johnson as well, but the problem is with Magic is um, Magic wasn't as quite as accomplished as these players I've named, like Michael Jordan, Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, in terms of the career, right? So because his Magic's career was too short and he, sh and he retired early. That's the real problem. And um, defense-wise, you know, Will was a great defender. Michael was a great defender. Kareem was a was a pretty good defender. And Russell, of course, the greatest defender. Defending-wise, as a two-way player, I can't give Magic Johnson that. Magic Johnson is a great versatile player, right? On offense, he's probably the best, right? He's uh, he, on, he can do everything: we score, rebound, um, assist, of course. Um, but as a two-way player, I can't give him over these guys. So these four like in my opinion is the top four that should be considered for number one although Michael Jordan really 95% of people would consider Michael Jordan number one but the other five percent you can make a case Will Chamberlain, Kareem or uh, Bill Russell so uh, yeah that's it that's the ESPN top 100 list and uh, yeah let's go on to some other ESPN articles actually because I want to go th through some of these as well and um, give my uh, opinion on that 